This unit is on sets, scalars, vectors, matrices, and tensors. And it introduces the notation that we're going to use to describe those. A set S, which we often describe using this calligraphic notation here, is the mathematical model for a collection of different things. What does it mean? Let's look at some examples. We use this symbol here, the strike through O symbol, to denote the empty set. That's a set without any things in it. Let's look at some non-empty sets that are more interesting. For example, the set of three elements, the three different colors, red, green, and blue. And we use the curly braces to denote a set of n different things. We can also have the set of binary numbers 0 and 1, which is often going to be used in the deep learning class. For example, when we talk about binary classification, we want to classify if a certain object is present in an image or if it's absent in an image. We can have also sets that are infinitely large, like for example, the set of real numbers that contains all possible real numbers and there are infinitely many of them. And we denote this set using this R with this special notation here. So for example, the real number 1, 234 is element of that set. Another set with infinitely many elements is the set of natural numbers, in this case including 0, which we denote as n0, which contains the elements 0, 1, 2, and it goes on and on and on. We can also have sets of sets. For example, we can take the set of two different sets, the set of the real numbers and the natural numbers. The cardinality of a set S is denoted with these vertical lines here. And this denotes the number of members of S. For example, this set here has cardinality 2 and this set here has cardinality 3. We can also take the union of two sets. This is not a set of sets. This is really merging the elements of the two sets together, combining them. Note that if we would take the union of these two sets, then we would end up with the real numbers because the natural numbers are comprised in the real numbers. So this is something we could do. We could say S, C, S1 is R and N is S2 is N. And so S would be equal um, to R because we have like the same elements inside or the elements of n are already in R. We can also take the intersection of two sets, which is denoted by this symbol here. So for example, if we would take the intersection of these two sets here, then we would end up with the set of natural numbers again. And finally, we can take the Cartesian product of two sets, which we denote with this Cartesian cross symbol here. And what this means is that we span now a two-dimensional space. The first dimension is of domain S1 and the second dimension of domain S2. So for example, if we want to describe an image, we want to describe a pixel location, then we can have R2 and we, in this particular case for R, for the Cartesian product of two real line spaces, um, we write r to the power of 2. This is a special notation that tells us that we have the Cartesian product of two um, real number spaces. And so we could describe the 2D pixel coordinate in this r2 space here. Good. Now let's continue with the basic elements of algebra and linear algebra. And let's start with scalars. A scalar is a single number. 
in contrast to many other objects in linear algebra, such as vectors and matrices and tensors, for example. We write scalars in lowercase non-bold typeface font. So for example, like this, you can say this x, which is lowercase non-bold x, is an element of the real numbers, or this lowercase non-bold c is an element of the natural numbers. And um, these two are scalars. They just have a single dimension. When introducing them, we have to specify their type. So when we write about them, we first need to denote the domain like here. Is it, for example, element of the set of real numbers or an element of the set of natural numbers? A vector, in contrast, is an array of numbers with a specific order of the elements inside that array. We write vectors in lowercase bold typeface font. Um, and this is what you can see here in this example. You can see that this X is now a bold font, um, but it's still a lowercase character. So in this case, we have a three dimensional vector. It has three scalar entries, X1, X2, and X3. And together they form a vector, a three dimensional vector. We can identify each element of the vector, which is a scalar, each element is a scalar, via its index, one, two, or three. So we identify the elements x1, x2, or x3 via their indices. If in this particular case here, each of the xi is element of the space of real numbers, then the vector itself is element of the three-dimensional space of real numbers, the Cartesian product of R, R, and R. So we say X is in the Cartesian product of R. We can also think of vectors as identifying points in space, where each of these elements is a coordinate. For example, a 2D vector defines a coordinate in the 2D image domain, for example. Or a 3D vector could define a coordinate in 3D space, a point that's x meters in x direction, y meters in y direction, and c meters in c direction with respect to a defined canonical coordinate system. We can also index subsets of elements of a vector, as indicated here. We have defined this set S with the indices 1 and 3. This is a index set. And if we index that vector, if we index into that vector with this index set, then we retrieve a two-dimensional vector with the elements x1 and x3. Let's now move on to matrices. A matrix is a 2D array of numbers where each element is identified by two indices. We write matrices in our classes using uppercase bold typeface font as shown here. And now you can already see why we use these different font styles so we can distinguish matrices from vectors, from scalars. You can also see that a matrix is composed. It's an array of scalars. So inside we have little elements that are not boldface and that are lowercase, meaning they are scalars. So here we have a two by two matrix. If a real valued matrix has M rows and N columns, we write A is element of R to the power of M times N. The Cartesian product M times N. This is the space that A lives in. We also say that M times N is the shape of the matrix. 
So for example, this matrix here has the shape 2 pi 2. It has two rows and two columns. We can identify each element of a matrix via its two indices. You can see here that we have these scalars with two indices each, where the first index is the row, so we have the first row, and the second indices indexes the column, so we have the first column. So this element here is in the first row and in the first column of that matrix. And similarly here we have an element that's in the first row and in the second column. Or here we have an element that's in the second column and in the, se in the second column and in the second row. So more generally, for, e for each aij, each aij is the element of a in the ith row and the jth column. Sometimes we skip the comma in the notation to avoid clutter, but it's more precise and more clean if we write the comma as shown here. We can also address or index entire columns and rows of matrices. And there's a shorthand notation for this as well, which is the column notation. We say that for example, aj, which is now a vector, as you can see, it's a lowercase bold typeface font, indices indexes all rows of matrix A for column J, which means it's a column vector, it's the Jth column of matrix A, and this is a column vector, so it's an upright vector. And similarly, we can also extract a row vector where we use the transpose here that we'll introduce in a bit to indicate that this is a row vector where the row vector, so the row, the ith row of that matrix is extracted like this. We take the ith row and all column elements for the ith row. Let's say if i is 2, then we take this element and this element and we form a row vector. So this is the column notation. That simply means we take all elements along that dimension for a particular column J or for a particular row I. Now we can go one step further and define tensors, where tensors are arrays with more than two axes. And they are used quite extensively in deep learning, as you will see, in particular when we deal with images and convolutional neural networks. Already an RGB image is a tensor, by the way, because we have the two spatial dimensions, x and y, or sometimes also called u and v, and we have the third dimension, which is the color channel dimension. We have the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. So we have a um, tensor of size 3 by the height and the width of the image. We write tensors in also uppercase and bold typeface font, so they are written as matrices are, so we can only distinguish them from matrices by their dimension, and in fact a matrix is also a tensor. An example for a tensor of shape m times n times k is as follows. We identify each element of a tensor via its indices. So similar to before, we write a, i, j, k. Oh, there should be commas here as well. Elements of a tensor are scalars and written in lower case non-bold phase font. Let's now look at the so-called transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix A, which is written as A transpose, A with this little t here in its superscript. The transpose of a matrix A mirrors the matrix A at its main diagonal. And this is illustrated here. 
So if we have this matrix here with its matrix elements using the index notation that I've shown before, if we take the transpose, then we take this column here and write it as this row. And we take this column here and write it as this row. So we effectively, we are mirroring um, at this axis here, at this diagonal axis. Similarly, a standard column vector can be transposed into a row vector. The default notation for a vector, if I don't have a transpose, is to interpret it as a column vector, as shown here, where the elements are on top of each other. Um, but I can transpose this vector, and so I get a row vector with the same elements. Now, when we write math, in papers or also on slides within text it's very inconvenient to write a column back write down a column vector which however is the, the standard notation for a vector because that would create a lot of empty space around it and so what we often do is that we write a column vector as a row vector because we can just add this transpose symbol here to indicate that this is actually a column vector we just write it as a row vector to save space when we write it in line of regular texts as a mathematical equation. For scalars, the transpose of that scalar is the scalar itself. Nothing changes. We don't have to mirror anything. There's only one element, so it's the element itself. Let's finally look at some examples with real numbers. Let's say we have the matrix A with the elements 1, 2, 3 and 4, which is a matrix out of the space of 2 by 2 matrices of real numbers. Then the transpose of this matrix is this matrix here where simply the two off-diagonal elements 3 and 2 have been swapped. Each element of that matrix here can be indexed via its two indices. So A11 is 1, A12 is 2, A21 is 3, and A22 is 4. We can also access entire columns or rows of that matrix. So for example, we can uh, extract the the first column of that matrix. So we take all the elements of all the rows in the first column, and this is the vector 1, 3. We can also take all the elements of the first row of that vector, which is the, uh, of that matrix, which is the vector 1, 2. Similarly, we can take all the elements of the second column, which is the vector 2, 4. Or we can look at the transposed matrix here and take the um, row vector, the second row vector here, 2, 4. And just as you can see here in this case, we have written these vectors as part of um, a you know, matrix space, a matrix space where one of the dimensions is 1. So we have a 2 by 1 space here, 1 by 2, um, or a 1 by 2 shaped matrix here. So a 1 by 2 shape matrix or a 2 by 1 shape matrix is a vector. Just we write it as a matrix. And if we do so, we know if it's a row or if it's a column vector. So here we have a column, here we have a row vector, here we have a column vector. So in other words, the last row here, this, these vectors here, they can be considered either matrices or vectors in R2. But if they are considered vectors, then we make it explicit if they are row or column vectors by writing either A or A transpose. So we would always consider A to be a column vector and A transpose to be the corresponding row vector because we don't have the shape of these anymore. We do this to distinguish row from column vectors, which would otherwise not be clear.